Good morning. If you have your Bible this morning, please join me in Genesis chapter 19. This morning, we are going to be studying Lot. Um, I hate that we have to be under these circumstances. It's very, uh, it's, uh, it's very unfortunate, you know, how we're having to have church, but, you know, we'll do the best of what we have. So at least we are capable of doing online church. That's the way that I see it is it's better than nothing. Um, this morning, in Genesis chapter 19, our text is going to be from verse 15 to 29. So beginning in verse 15, we see where God says, And when the morning arose, the angels hastened out Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife, and take thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid upon his hand and upon the word of, of his wife, excuse me, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, and he said, Escape for thy life, look not beyond thee, neither stay thou in thy plain, escape to the mountain, lest, thee be, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, no, my Lord, behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown me unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is the little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is that not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, and, excuse me, <clears throat> escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither, which therefore the name of the city was called Zor. And the sun was risen, was risen up upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor, and then called the Lord, reigned upon Sodom and, Galore, and Gomorrah. Brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities in all the plain, and in the inhabitants of the cities which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham and Abraham got up early in the morning to place where he should stood where he stood before the Lord and looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of plain and beheld and lo the smoke of the country went up as smoke of a furnace and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. There's a few things that I want you to take notice of of our text this morning. And our first thing that I want you to notice is in verse 15, Lot knew the plan. You see, Lot was given the instruction to, to leave the city. He knew what he was supposed to do. He knew God's plan for him. He told him. He told him very plain and simple as we see in verse 15. And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife, take thy two daughters, which, there, which are here, and least they be consumed in the iniquity of the city. You see, Lot knew the plan, and what I want to tie in this morning with Lot knowing the plan is, Christian, you know the plan. Now, what I mean by that is, in life, well, let me put it to you like this. If you're a Christian that's opened your Bible before, if you're just a single person that has access to God's holy word, you know God has a plan for you. You see, that's not a secret. It's not something that you have to, to really do in-depth studying in your, in your biblical studies to understand God has a plan for you. Now, Lot had a plan, just like you have a plan. Understand this morning that God does have a plan for you. I understand. Sometimes it may feel like that he doesn't. Sometimes it may feel like your, your life can be meaningless or purposeless or, or not have any, any reason for your existence at all. But understand, you have a plan in your life. You may just not even know it. You see, there, God has an individual, specific, every step laid out plan in your life, specifically designed for you. You, whoever you are watching under the sound of my voice right now, God has a plan for you. You just may not even know it. Join me if you have your Bible to Psalm 28. Psalm 28. In Psalm 28, 
uh, reading in verse 7, it says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. I am helped. Therefore, my, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song I will praise him. There's one thing that you can stick to in your entire life. There's one thing that no matter what's taken away from you, whether it be your rights, whether it be all of your money, all of your belongings, there's one thing that you can always, always, always fall back on. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, as we read in Psalms 28, the Lord is your strength. He's your shield. He is going to protect you. He is going to guide you in life if you'll allow him. You see, Lot, as we read in our text this morning, Lot knew the plan, but he, he didn't like it. Lot didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. Lot wanted to do what Lot wanted to do. Let me tell you something, Christian. How often do we do that? How often do we do what we want to do? Even though sometimes we may know it's maybe not right. Maybe we shouldn't go out to that party. Maybe we shouldn't uh, talk to that person in that rude way or, or whatever your, your thing is that you struggle with. Just like Lot struggled. We all do. That's something that all of us have in common. Christian, non-believer, whoever you are, we all struggle in these ways. But let me tell you something. You should not struggle with abiding by the plan. You should not struggle with not listening to what God has for you. Because he has a plan for you that is perfect. It is flawless. There is no errors, no contradictions. Because God never changes his mind. He's always right and he always will be. And if you don't like that, friend, well, there's nothing that you can do about it. But God's plan for you is right. God's plan for you is what you are supposed to be doing. So what is stopping you? What is stopping you from, from allowing yourself to accept God's plan for you? Remember that verse, Psalm 28. The Lord is my strength and my shield. What an amazing piece of scripture. The second thing I want you to take notice of this morning, as we return back to our text... In uh, Genesis 19, reading in verse 16, it says, And while he lingered, take notice of that word, lingered, the men laid upon his hand and upon his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought forth him and set him without the city. While he lingered. Lot lingered from God's plan. Christian, how often do we do that? What I mean by that this morning is, how often do we know what's right? And we don't do it. How often in our life do we know that God has a plan for us in our heart? We know that in our heart, God has something laid out for us specifically, but we linger from it. We stray from it. We hesitate. We don't move forward. We move backwards. How often do we make that mistake? Friend, let me tell you, I would have to guess daily. I think daily we make the mistake because we know. I know from experience, personally, I will get burdened for things that I need to be doing. God will burden my heart to go witness to that stranger, even though the flesh side of me doesn't want to. The flesh side of me wants to stay back in my comfort zone or, or just not make things weird. Or who likes to, you know, talk about God? That's uncomfortable by society's standards. But let me tell you something. That is lingering from the plan. That is hesitating. That is not moving forward. How many times do we linger in a spiritual decision? You know, I think we're all guilty of that. I think each and every one of us. At the time before we accepted Christ into our, into our heart. I think there's a time that, that we all have in common. That we can all man up and say and agree that there was God was calling me to be saved. God was burdening my heart, but I didn't do it the first time. How many of you can honestly say, I accepted Jesus the first time I was under conviction? Probably not many of you. I'm not going to say it's not possible. I'm sure it is, but the fact is, as humans, as our human nature, we like to procrastinate. 
We like to stray away from what we need to be doing. I'm guilty of it all. I'm willing to admit that. I procrastinate just like each and every one of you. But it's not fun. It's not a, it's not a game to procrastinate. We shouldn't linger as Lot did. That's not something that you want to play around with. Because before you realize it, Christian, before you realize what's even happened, your life can be over. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. So why are you putting up with it? Why are you hesitating and lingering around and, and wasting all of your time not doing what God's plan is for you in your life? What reason do you have to not move forward in your spiritual life? If you're under the sound of my voice this morning, what reason do you have to not accept Jesus? Why would you hesitate in accepting Christ as your Savior? Is it because you're not in the church? Is it because you're not in the presence? Well, let me tell you something, friend. You don't have to be in my presence. You don't have to be in anyone's presence to accept Jesus as your Savior. God is always here. He is always ready with open arms to accept you. So why hesitate? What reason do you have? Why did Lot linger? That's a question I, I can't answer. Was it because of fear? Was it because of indecisiveness? It doesn't matter. The reason of, of why Lot lingered, why he didn't move forward instantly with what God wanted him to do, is, is unimportant. Christian, it doesn't matter your excuse. It doesn't matter your, your reason for not studying your Bible. Your reason for not coming to church. Your reason for not being involved in your church and, and things that you need to be doing. The excuse doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is either you do or you don't. You either follow God. You either make him the king of your life and make him your, your good shepherd and, and, and make up your mind that you're not only going to give your heart to him, but you're going to give your life to him. It doesn't matter your excuse. What matters is your choice. That's just like when we reach the end of our life. It's not going to matter what we did in life. The only thing that's going to matter is your answer. Are you a child of the king or not? That's the only thing that matters. So Jesus Christ can look at you. God can say to your face, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I hope that you will be alongside with us as we hear those words. What an amazing, amazing piece of scripture. And that's something that I, I would love to hear those words more than having any earthly possession, any amount of money. Those words, those sweet, sweet words are more important than any, anything you could ever have. So why do you hesitate? Why do you stop in, in your plan? Why are you stopped in your tracks? Why are you going? Why are you going backwards, going down and not forward? What is it in your life that's stopping you from moving forward? I want to just encourage you this morning and, and get you to realize that no matter what is going on in your life, God can help you overcome anything. Lot was faced with a challenge. Samson was faced with a challenge. Stephen was faced with a challenge. There are so many people in the Bible that are faced with these challenges. But who do they rely on for their strength? That is Jesus Christ. He gives us more strength than we will ever understand. There's times in my life when I'm just tired. I feel like just, just I need to go to sleep. I feel like I have no strength left. But I pray and I reach up to God and I just say, Lord, strengthen me. We all know what Philippians 4.13 says. God will strengthen you. He is your rock. He is your shield. Rely on him. What reason do you have not to? Let me tell you, Christian, there is not a reason. There is no logical reason. To not accept Jesus as your Savior because let me tell you, friend, he is standing with open arms. Don't linger in your life. Don't linger in your plan. Thirdly, I want to uh, guide your attention to Galatians chapter 6. 
But, excuse me, before we go there, let's, let's, read in our, let's return back to our text in verse 26. So we know that Lot knew the plan. We know that he lingered from God's plan. Lot also faced the consequences. Reading back to our text in verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Lot's wife became a pillar of salt for looking back. Christian, how many of you that are under the sound of my voice this morning look back? What I mean by that is, how many of you have things in your past that you just simply cannot move forward from? There's things in your past that you just cannot let go. Whether it be a, a family member that has done you wrong. Whether it be somebody that has just upset you. Whether it be something in your life that just isn't going the way you want it to go. How many of you are looking back? How many of you look back in the past and you dwell upon that? And you don't move on and you don't move forward and you stay still and you go down and you don't move forward with God's plan because you're looking back. Christian, uh, that, is, that is listening to me this morning with all that I have in my heart to tell you, if you don't get anything from what I'm telling you, just listen to these words. Don't let the past keep you down. I don't know who you are that's, that's listening to me. I don't know who you may be struggling with, whatever your situation is. But let me tell you something. Start a new beginning. Start over. That saying, turn over a new leaf. There is no better way to do that than through God. There is no better way to, to make a new beginning than through Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you this morning, if you don't know him as your savior, you're missing out. You're, you're missing out on blessings upon blessings. Christian, don't dwell in the past. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You see, when we live in the past, we can never move forward. We can never move forward in our life if we are constantly worried about what happened to us 10 years ago, five years ago, one year ago, yesterday even. There is nothing we can do. I want to bring something to your attention this morning. The past is in the past. Whatever you're struggling with this morning in the past, whatever you're struggling with daily in your life that's in the past, realize this this morning. You cannot change it. You cannot change something that has already occurred. It's done. It's over. You make a mistake in life. Yeah, you may be down. Yeah, you may be kicked down. Yeah, you may feel sorry for yourself. But let me tell you, it's done. It's in the past. Let it go. You cannot spend your entire life dwelling on what you could have done differently, what you could have changed about your about your high school or about your your first job or your career in life you you cannot spend your entire life but let me tell you what you can do this morning you can put your faith in jesus christ king of kings and lord of lords and he will help you guide your future you see that plan i talked about earlier you are it's not too late it's not too late person that's that's under my voice it is not too late to move forward in the plan God has for you. It's not too late. It'll, it's not going to be too late. But let me tell you something. Don't hesitate. Don't linger like Lot did. Don't put it off because you are not guaranteed tomorrow. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. So what is stopping you? What is putting you off? What is putting, it, what is putting off God's plan for you? Have something in your life you need to change? What's stopping you? You see, that's the, the great thing about the past. Is it's done. It's in the past. It may be 
something that you made a mistake. But the, the great thing about the past is it's over. Now it's time for a new beginning. Now it's time to make up your mind that, hey, I may have made mistakes. I may have lived a, a, a worldly life for so many years, but it's your time this morning to make your past and leave it in the past. It's now time to be in the future. It's now time to, to turn over a new leaf, to start a new beginning, to accept Christ. That's your first step. Join me in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. In Galatians chapter 6, this is a very popular scripture that I'm sure that we have all heard before. Reading in verse 6, it says, Let him that is taught in this world communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, he shall also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall shall of the flesh reap corruption, and he that showeth of the Spirit shall of the Spirit of reap of life everlasting. Lot faced consequences. His family faced consequences. You will face consequences in life. There's going to be a point in time where we stand before Christ Almighty and He is going to judge us. Where will you go? We went to church camp last week, and I heard that question more and more times than I probably ever have. Where will you go when you die? So I want to further extend that question to you. Where will you go when you die? Because let me tell you something. This life has consequences, right? If I were to take a, a match and hold it over my hand, and, it, and I get too close and it burns my skin... My action was holding that match too close, but the consequence is my skin is burning. It would hurt. Well, that's anything in life. You have consequences for your actions. You have consequences for what you don't do. Let me tell you something, friend. That may be confusing to you, but if you not doing something has consequences for that too. For example, you not accepting Christ as your Savior. This Bible tells us that's, that leads to an eternity in hell. Accept Christ. Ask him into your heart this morning. Do not put it off because there is consequences. We see that all the time in life. Whatsoever a man soweth, he shall also reap. Oh, how we see that. I just want to encourage you this morning. Know that God has a plan for you. Just like Lot. And also, just a reminder, do not hesitate in his plan. Do not hesitate with that spiritual decision you need to make this morning. If God is burdening your heart to do something, then do it. What do you have that is stopping you? Don't. You don't want to face the consequences of not accepting Christ. I tell you because I care, because I love you enough to tell you the truth. And there's consequences to life. There's consequences for not making decisions. You don't want to face the consequence of the Lord saying, I never knew you. You don't want to face that. That's not something that you are going to ever be able to handle. Take my word for it. If you won't believe this, this black and white ink, then take my word for it. You Hell is not meant for us. You don't want to go there. Trust me, young person, old person, middle-aged person. You do not want to spend your life. You do not want to spend your eternity in hell. But that is the consequence for not accepting Christ. Don't face that consequence. Thank you for listening this morning. I'd like to pray and dismiss us in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for all my many blessings. Lord, I just ask that if there's anyone that just has listened to this message, Lord, I just ask that you would just burden their heart to not put off the, the spiritual decisions, not put off your plan for them in their life, Lord. I just ask that you would just please keep us safe and protected and just help things to return to normal, Lord, if it be your will. In 
Just heal the sick and just remember our soldiers and missionaries, Lord. Just keep them safe. I thank you again, Father, and I pray all this in your name. Amen.